Continuing on our journey through the pre-Inca cultures, we are flying over the mysterious Pampa del Ingenio. The first person to fly over this land was the American scientist Paul Kosok in 1939. He discovered enigmatic lines stretching out into the distance and pointing towards where the sun sets. This could not be a natural phenomenon. These lines must have been drawn and etched into the Pampa by the hand of man. He believed it to be the largest book of astronomy in the world. And there were not just lines, but also enormous drawings which could only be seen from the air and at a considerable height. The German mathematician Maria Reiche continued the investigations. She spent 40 years of her life studying the lines and drawings. In effect, many of them coincided with solar solstices and the exact place where the moon rises. But according to this investigator, these lines across the Pampas were made during the first millennium of our era by the Nazca and Paraca peoples. In her studies, she makes the following observation. How and why were they made by a supposedly primitive culture who could not fly? They must have first planned and drawn them on a smaller scale. But how they were able to place them precisely and in the right direction remains a mystery, which will take many years to solve. We have before us one of the most important tasks in the study of our history, which will help us understand the peoples of the past and their way of thinking. The fragile lines have been conserved due to the almost total lack of rainfall. But there are parts where car tracks have destroyed them and the Pan American Highway cuts right across this plain. The collection of over 16,000 skulls in the Archaeological Museum in Lima makes it possible to study the pathology of these ancient cultures. These Paraca and Nazca skulls were subjected to a traumatic deformation, apparently simply for aesthetic reasons, for a long, thin skull was a symbol of the upper class. The deformations were achieved by means of two splints, one at the frontal bone and one at the occipital bone. Then increasing pressure was applied and over the years this gave a flat forehead and a high cranial vault. Many cultures, both before and after the Paracas, even the Incas, carried out brain surgery using rudimentary surgical instruments made of obsidian. The only anesthetic used during these trepanning operations were the hallucinatory effects of the chicha. Normally, they operated on fractures and blows to the skull received in battle, and to a lesser extent migraines and other pathologies. The percentage of patients who recovered following the operation was very small. In these samples, we can clearly see how the bone grew in those who survived the operation. It is also evident which are those who did not survive. The basic weapons of these peoples were clubs and maces, striated to cause even greater injury. Blows were mainly directed at the head of the enemy, and that is why skull fractures and the subsequent trepanning to treat them were so common. Battles were frequent and cruel in these ancient civilizations. One proof of this is given to us by the Sechin culture, which developed around 1,500 years BC in what is now the coastal province of Kazma. The stele, which surround a rectangular stone building, tell us of a battle in which victors and vanquished are depicted in a remarkable bas-relief technique. Mutilations of limbs, faces of dead warriors with closed eyes, blood streaming from their heads, backbones. The Sechin had a surprisingly detailed knowledge of the human body. This stella represents the eyes of the defeated. On another, we see intestines, parts of a pelvis, bones. Mm -hmm. 
Later than the Sachin, the Chavinde Huanta civilization arose and flourished from 1000 BC to 300 AD. It was the most influential in Peru. At the Raymond de Estele, one of the most important finds from this period, we see the anthropomorphic figure of their god of creation with feline and bird-like features. <laughs> 